So this this and this smartphone has Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 flagship CPU of 2022. But see here, this is the N22 benchmark. So N22 basically checks your phone's CPU, GPU, storage, basically everything and gives you a score. And here you get 7 lakh 28,000. Here you get 9 lakh 70,000. And here you get 10 lakh or 1 million. And funny thing, these three phones not only have the same processor, but you pay almost the same price for all these three phones. So why the same processor is giving different performance on three different phones? So are you being scammed? Is this some sort of hidden performance trick? Well, if you think it's just benchmarks, well here, let me show you another app called CPU Throttling. And now a lot of people don't understand this app. Let's run the benchmark first. First of all, CPU Throttling only tests the CPU nothing else and the whole point of this benchmark is how good your phone will perform if you want 100% performance all the time and if you love such facts and things subscribe to TechWiser and 6000 likes this time we'll do the most common tech myths busted and see here are the scores and if you see here oneplus throttle to like 70% but the maximum score is only 2,61,000 and here if you see the iq9 pro throttle to 38% which is not at all good but the score is a lot higher than oneplus 10 pro and here, if you see the Red Magic 7, it's all green and the throttling is like 85% with good scores. So in simple words, it's the same processor or SOC in all the three phones, but it has been tuned or optimized in different ways in all the three phones. Here on OnePlus 10 Pro, the performance has been reduced for of course stability and less heat. And here, both on iQ9 Pro and this Nubia Red Magic 7, the CPU is left as it is. Then don't you think there will be heat here? Well, see me, Manu and Rinal will keep on playing games continuously on all the three phones for half an hour. And we are not playing any game. We'll play Genshin Impact, which is probably the heaviest game on Android and wait at full settings. So the room temperature is about 32 degrees and mm. my phone is around 35 degrees. The Nubia Red Magic is on 34 degrees and the iQ9 Pro is around 33.8 degrees. So we'll start the timer for 30 minutes and let's go. So it's been about 30 minutes or a bit more than 30 minutes. And if you see the temperature on the OnePlus 10 Pro is 34. 35 max 35 degrees the iq9 pro is about 31 31 or something like 33 degrees and the red magic is somewhat like 32 30 33 degrees so the max temperature we got was on the oneplus 10 pro so one thing is for sure the performance heat everything is better on nubia red magic 7 compared to these two phones but how isn't it snapdragon 8 gen 1 well, the Nubia Red Magic 7 has a big RGB fan over here. And here you have a look, it pulls in cool air through these vents. You can see the paper getting sucked up over here and it removes hot air from this end. See? And see the paper is getting blown away. And not just the RGB fan, it also has an aerospace grade metal called C21H44 which exactly turns into liquid at 39 to 41 degrees Celsius. And this is the exact temperature when your smartphone CPU starts heating. So all of this cooling mechanism helps Nubia Red Magic 7 to bring down the temperature by 20 degrees. So every smartphone that comes with the same processor might not perform the same. Companies optimize, downgrade or even upgrade the CPUs based on the smartphone cooling or the audience. Well, then Pratik, if that is the case, why doesn't every smartphone coming with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 has this type of cooling? Well, look at this phone. Look at how thick it is. Like, would you like to carry this phone in daily life or these phones? Let me know in the comments. Even let me ask people. So if you have to pick one phone to keep in your pocket and use it daily, just based on design, which one would you pick? Well, this is out of question for sure. This is too bulky and too flashy for my liking. The real competition is between this and this. I'll go with this one. I think it looks more premium and decent. In the last OnePlus 10 video, you told you didn't like that design. So based on design, maybe I will pick this. 
little less wobble compared to this one. Both of them are very similar, but if I have to pick one, I will pick this one, which is a bit new for me. And most importantly, not every phone is a gaming phone. And even posing your phone as a gaming phone limits the audience. Now, the real question is, why does Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 heat? Well, speed. Not the CPU speed, but speed of Qualcomm. Qualcomm wanted to push the CPU as early as possible. The manufacturers wanted to push the phones as early as possible. And there has been a history of Snapdragon heating issues. In case you don't know, when Apple moved to 64-bit CPU, Snapdragon just hurried and released Snapdragon 810 with a 64-bit CPU. And the result was phones heating left and right. Now, the same heating issue happened previous year with Snapdragon 888. But now, smartphones that are coming with 888 aren't heating that much. So mostly, the next year of flagships coming with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus will control the heating. And this all heating recently is because of Apple's processor are getting far, far better. And Qualcomm or Snapdragon just wants to reach Apple quickly. But if that's the case, what can you do as a consumer? Well, don't go for only the specs of the phone. The specs of the phone cannot tell you the full story. For example, people buying phones with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 might get different performance in these three different phones. So rather, you should watch reviews and not just unboxing. Watch comparisons that help you decide better or at least you would know that the performance is not the same on the device that you are buying. And not just us, the internet is a really good place. You can get reviews of probably anything and everything. So watch reviews from the person you trust. So. Is it all bad for Android and Qualcomm? Well, no. A lot of people didn't talk about this, but Qualcomm recently bought a company called Nuvia for $1.4 billion in 2021. And Nuvia is the company founded by Apple's ex-employees who worked on iPhone processors. And industry experts have predicted Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 will also heat. But Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is the time where Qualcomm will be able to compete with Apple and make actually better CPUs for Android. On that note, this is Pratik signing off. See you in the next video. Poof, poof.